Uh, hello, hello, okay, hello, nice. hello, yeah, just, hello. Yeah, yeah, stop, stop. I needed to v uh, mute my PC without uh, muting you. So should be good. I'm gonna double check on my phone here to see if we're uh, live bolitos. That's live in Spanish. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, we're live. Barnes & Noble Nook Glow Light 4 Buyer's Guide. All right. So we can start from here. Hello, Michael Kozlewski. Hello. How are you doing on this bright and shiny day on this fiery burning planet of ours right now? Uh, yeah, I mean, it's not burning here. It's been like raining, <laughs> not with like record rainstorms yeah. here. It's like, mm. you know, it rains like 50 millimeters to like 100 millimeters a day. Yeah. Uh, so like other like the Coca Hawa and like all of like the other uh things are just, uh, just closing down every major highway in the developed metropolitan area of BC. Uh, that's yeah. all, yeah. Just, you know, massive hindrances on all logistic channels. But but that that's fine. Yeah, so uh, how are you? Yeah, good. We're just going to banter back and forth here till we get some people rolling in because it uh, doesn't help us getting into the meat of the potatoes until we got some people to join us along for the ride. Yeah, another day. Uh, we got a little bit of a mystery product today. Um, this was randomly in the... Uh, uh in the mailbox and um yeah it was weird because it has no branding of any kind and uh yeah it's just some random pen this is p2 on it it has nothing to do with onyx because we double checked with them uh yeah so I, I don't know man just another day uh we're gonna be doing some some vidges and some more contests and uh it's gonna be fun it's gonna be a fun december that's what it's gonna be, it's gonna be a great december uh are you sure that it's not the pilot they they call it the the like g2 you we just went to the trade show at connected inc um it could it doesn't say pilot but it could be a pilot from china because it's straight up it's made in china it's written all in chinese and it has no discerning marks of any major brand and pilot is a major brand of manufacturers for consumer pens both electronic and non-electronic, they'd most certainly put the Blue Pilot logo on their unit, but um, it just, I guess it's, I, I don't know, but we're going to do a video on it. So I'm, I'm going to wait till we uh, crack it open on camera just because it's more fun. Uh, Mike, I got to tell you right now, uh, we have 20 something people watching, but chat doesn't seem to be working apparently. Can you just make sure all the little check marks are, uh, are good to go on that? Please and thank you. Usually there's like, uh, and it actually said the video has been removed by the uploader. If I go on uh, YouTube, I'm just going to double check here. And everything says upcoming and there's nothing live right now. <laughs> okay, no, we're we're getting everyone in now. Okay, we have been... Everything has been fixed. Uh, we got some people with us here today. And uh, what are we talking about, Mike? What are we here to share with everyone today on this glorious day? Um, so I guess I broke the story that Barnes & Noble is going to be releasing a new device. And yes. uh, some small media outlets have like picked up on it. Some you know, mobile read uh, picked up on it. So uh, I do have some stuff to talk about in regards to that. So that's probably like the biggest release that's going to occur in the e-reader world from now until the end of the year. Everyone else is like yeah. already unveiled products, um, whether they just announced them and they're, they're coming out soon or they, they have already come out like the major players in the industry, you know, the, the Amazon and, and obviously yeah. Col Kobo, which are the uh, global number one and, and number two player, you know, their devices have been on the market since like, you know, um, end of October ish yeah. slash like early November ish. So oh. it's not so far out of the, the, the picture that Barnes and Noble has 
you know, is going to release something. So the, we the, thought they weren't going to release something uh, because I remember you and I were talking. We're like, okay, the Kindles are here, the Kobo's are here, and uh, we're like, wow, the Kobo stage has note taking. And then as the weeks went on, we're like, Bar- you know, it's it's already December in a couple of days. Where's Barnes and Nobles? And then yeah, you you got some uh, sneak preview from your guys there, and uh, um, I think you wrote. Yeah, you did. You did. You and your team broke the story, didn't you? You wrote on it first. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. um. I guess, I guess what had happened, I'll set the stage for it. So, um, and if, you know, Barnes and Noble is the largest book selling chain in the United States. So Mm -hmm. if you live outside the States, Barnes and Noble may not be like a household name for you, but if you live in the States, um, it's pretty well the only e-reader that you can buy that you can go to the actual bookstore play with it before you buy it. And if there's anything wrong with it, you can just bring it back to the store. Now, obviously Amazon does have, I think like 14 bookstores spread across the U S but it's, it's, you know, it's certainly pretty well, just like on the West coast, you know, of the, of the United States. And there's just like a Spartan few, like on the East coast. So um, they're pretty well, like a non-factor before trying before you buy it so barnes and noble is big in that regards because you can sort of do everything under like one roof so uh, i was told by a few people but they never sent me pictures that there was signage in the stores about a week ago um you know ask us about the nook low light four and then you would ask the customer service person about the nook low light four and they had no idea what you were talking about <laughs> yeah yeah so yeah, yeah. some disconnect between you know new york sending them out signage to promote a new product and nobody actually knows what the new product is i've seen that because they they get all their locations loaded with the actual physical material they need to decorate the store accordingly but they haven't told all their staff this so people are seeing it they're like hey what's that what's that and none of the actual people working there have any idea what this random promotional slash advertising material has anything to do with. Right. So as of Friday, um, so I've amended my piece on the nickel like for a couple of times, mainly because uh, people who actually work at Barnes and Noble actually have spec sheets now. Um, So I do have pretty well the full spec like sheet uh, for it. uh, But you know, I know exactly, you know, in terms of the processor who made it, uh, you know, for the storage, like the internal storage, who made it, you know, um, so I do have a lot to go on. So we yeah. can talk about this first if you want. Uh, yeah, maybe you hit up a screen share if you have a sheet. Uh, that would be well, it's uh, not like a sheet sheet, but I could I can show you some things. Yeah, let's show what we can because it's probably a lot easier than you reading off every single line of specs give people a better idea of what to look at there grasp it uh so this is like this oh, is nice. sort of like a mock-up of the front right but it that looks like the back actually oh sorry yeah no i see it yeah yeah, yeah i think this this back. could be the back That's so the back. Th- this is the front yeah uh oh, yeah, so they have all four or oh, sorry six sides i guess yeah so as yeah. you can see from this and this is so on the fcc site which is like where um this picture came from it flashes up for like less than like half a second <laughs> I see the and then, wheel. yeah <laughs> then it did then it disappears because i yeah. guess this was like an embargoed image that the mm-hmm. fcc accidentally published so you can like look um, here that uh there's a this looks like to be either a status indicator light it's or a status yeah. No, it's not big enough to be a 3.5 because 3.5 would be the same diameter as the USB. And yeah, it's too small to be a, a headphone jack. Okay. So they yeah. are running USB C. And yeah. you can see on either side that there's actual manual page That's true buttons. Nice. And look at the side view, the bind uh, in the middle or the outside. It wraps around, you know, the buttons kind of, yeah. it's, like th- it's like a fingernail. It wraps around the actual unit. Yeah. So it looks like the home button uh is still like the like the you know the n yeah uh so for for nook and stuff so this is this looks like to be like either a capacitive button or a, like an actual yeah the traditional they, they nook button out. yeah, yeah they, pop, they popped out on a couple of tablets and e-readers but i think 
you know, I, I, I think it would be fun to assume that they'd maybe do a soft touch hardware kind of thing, you know, to make it kind of different. like a capacitive button yeah, instead yeah, yeah. of like, like a, a physical button you that you press. It. That would be, both are very nice, but it, it would kind of be cool to um, do something different, I think. But uh, yeah, that that all looks uh, promising. Barnes and Noble has it's slowly, you know, it's it's almost not even it's up for discussion whether they're even part of the big three anymore with the sheer amount of underwhelming things they've been releasing but you know we we got to give them credit i mean they're barnes and noble right they're the big boys so let's yeah let's, let's i, I would say that they're probably number three at least in the u.s well, um yeah for sure absolutely so okay so uh, here's some things that i know um the the model number is this so you can google that and find out some stuff so it's going to be a six inch screen with 300 ppi uh, there'll be a quad core processor by all winner and will be running at 1.5 gigahertz. It'll have 32 gigs of storage. Um, it'll have USB-C. Um, it will have a 1400 uh, milliamp battery. It will be running Bluetooth 5.1 uh, Wi-Fi and it'll be upgraded to Android 8.1. So, uh, as you pro as you guys may or may not know, all of the Nook e-readers, the ones with the e ink screens, they've always run Android. Uh, mm -hmm. They, you know, mm -hmm. the early Nooks were like Android, like cupcake. You know, uh, like one or what? What was like 1 1.2, 1 1.5? Oh, I don't know. It was like yeah, cupcake, donut, and then it went to Eclair or whatever. Uh, yeah, so they, they were running really old versions of it. Yeah. So this will be the sort of like the first Nook that's like at least writing somewhat of a, a like a, a modern version of like Android. Uh, so let me oh, just... Oh, the 8.1, that's right up with um, uh, Boyu right now. Boyu's running 8.1. So uh, not everyone's at 11 yet, guys. We're, we're getting there. But e-readers are typically a little bit less on the priority list for Android updates. So... Uh, to have 8.1 is nothing short of amazing for the e-reader world. To have it 11 or 10 is, is a bonus. So that's just the reality of it. But um, Mike, they went with six inches, didn't they? Yeah. Um, that's you know, kind of weird. It's, it's because it's a part of the Glowlight series. Like Glowlight has had like, I guess, three iterations before. Yeah. Um, yeah. But, you know, the the you know, the simple touch with glow light, you know, yeah. that, that sort of thing. So, um, yeah, this is like just a six inch e reader. This is basically going to replace like the glow light three, which right. what came on 2016, I think. Uh, but, 2000... but, yeah. But that one was bigger than six inches. No, that you're thinking the Nook glow light plus. Ah, you're right. Yeah, that's right. It's you're, you're, yeah, it's to replace the man. When did the glow light three come out? Barnes and Noble has been out of the spotlight for quite a while. I can't even think we're going to have to look. I think Mike's looking it up. I, yeah. I, mean, I would say 2017. I was going to say 2018 March, but that's, that's my guess. March. Yeah. You're, you know, you're probably right. It's year end 2017. Is that far ago? Yeah. Cause then the plus came out the year after, I think. We're going to figure it out. Yeah, Barnes & Noble's been a little bit stepping out of the spotlight, at least in the global scene. Well, he's in the American scene, it seems, too. Uh, Bestie says, do you know if the screen is flush? It doesn't look like it, does it, Mike, on those pictures? Yeah, I, I won't know until, like, the um, final release date. Based on those pictures, Betsy, it, it's really just... Barnes & Noble doesn't like flush screen and bezels. They, I think they did it once on that... The glow light... Yeah, two, like 2017. Yeah, okay, yeah. So my God, it was the last release for a glow light outside of the Plus uh, sub brand was 2017, and in five weeks it will be 2022. That's a crazy step out. Um, yeah, Betsy, I, I'm gonna say that the it's not flush screen and bezel. It could be. I'm just looking at everything, looking at the history of Barnes and Noble. We did a wrap up, actually. Me and my team did a wrap up of the uh, 10 years of Barnes and Noble devices. And uh, their device design has been all over the place because of the revolving door of staff they've had, design team, CEO, CFOs, all this stuff. So it really is looking like it's going to be a, a, a sunken screen, which has its, it has its pros because a sunken screen has less stuff in front of your eyes than the actual screen. So it, it does in turn look a little bit better than flush screens, but 
uh, uh, someone else said, uh, Amit, is it a reading device or a writing device? And I already said to the chat, it's 100% a reading device. They went the opposite direction of Kobo uh, in which they're not going to do stylus support. And it seems that they didn't follow Amazon's uh, large screen trend either. Amazon traditionally never going above six inches, except for the DX uh, and the, uh, the recent Oasis. Uh, Amazon, their entire line almost is larger than six inches. Both paper whites are 6.8. The Oasis is bigger than six. So it's funny that Barnes & Noble went against Kobo and Amazon and made a smaller device while Kobo and Amazon are making like 6.8 sevens, eight inches with note taking. It's just a, a strange thing to see that based on those images, Mike, that Barnes and Noble didn't seem to come to the party with anything like wow factor. The Sage has note taking, the Kindle has wireless charging and the, the Nook is like, oh, it's a six inch. That's just what we're seeing here. It feels yeah, like. I, I think it's like meant to compete against like the the Kindle Paperweight, like 11th generation, not the signature edition, but yeah. the, the regular version. Um, and except it has more storage and yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. and it's, you know, competes against like the Libra too. You know, it's not competing against the high end. The Nook Glow Light Plus competes against like the higher end with its yeah. larger screen. But, you know, it competes solidly against like, the Tolino Vision Five. Uh, uh, it competes. Yep, yep. It competes against like you know the like the mid level devices from like most of the manufacturers. So that that's that's what it's competing against. It's not a high end device. It's like no, it's right. gonna yeah. it's gonna retail for like. I don't know, like 129 bucks probably to start. You see, that changes absolutely everything. That's that's the whole thing. You're right. It's not a premium device. We're not looking at the signature editions or the Kobo Sages uh, area of of this. What this is, it is a reading. It's a book reader. It's they're they're going back to basics. It's an ebook reader, and they're trying to add the modern conveniences of USB C, uh, Bluetooth. Potentially, they're going to throw some audio stuff at us. You know. Um, but but it just looks like, you know, people want fun and flashy things. I mean, evidently, that's why people are putting, you know, wireless charging and note taking on all these devices that shouldn't have them in people's minds, shouldn't have them on an e-reader. It just seems like Barnes & Noble didn't do anything and so far. I mean, all we see is a couple images, right? We don't have any renderings of a 3D product or, or anything yet. Yeah, that's correct. That's so we're just we're just you know speculating here. So I was told that the release date will be around December the fifth. So yeah, right uh, the corner. Yeah. So oh, some some first. some people in various stores says that they won't have them in stock until like the tenth. But at the very like least, within like the first week or week and a half of December, uh, you'll be able to like buy these online as well right. as buy them in the stores. So uh, the, the only thing is, is that like, you know, the Nook brand as a whole, it, it does have digital, it has signage in all the stores now advertising it, but yeah. they don't really have kiosks like they used to. Uh, it's yeah. just because it, it's, it's a, the black sheep now of like, you know, right. Barnes and Noble where it's basically housed at customer service. So you pretty well have to go to the customer service desk if you want to buy the new Nook when it's available. So yeah, there won't be to, displays. To set the scene or... a little bit for our, our friends that don't live in America, um, you used to walk into a Barnes and Noble store. It's a bookstore. You park your car, you walk in, and there'd be a curved booth that says Nook. It would be the the the, the Nook merchandise, and you look down at it, and there'd be the, all the accessories down below, the cases, the replacement cables. Then you look up, and there would be three to four, or sometimes two example units that you could go oh and they're connected with a little security cable and you go wow this is awesome i like this one then you ask the the, the lady or gentleman behind the booth and you say can i get a nook and they're like cool they'll take it over to customer service you walk to the checkout and you buy it now some places most places don't really have that at least the ones that are in our experience and we just had a comment from karen carter that says barnes and noble isn't really promoting nook they've even moved the merchandising for the nook brand in the middle of the store instead of at the uh at the like start. Front. yeah yeah and she just commented again karen carter and says looks like they would be available for pre-order since christmas is around the corner so uh yes thank you karen for giving us a little bit of a look into uh what they're doing with their stuff yeah i remember 
Uh, Mike, when we used to go down to the trade shows and stuff in the States, we always go to Barnes and Noble and they're like, right when you walk in, it's like, boom, nook. And this was of course in the heyday of <laughs> Barnes and Noble being like, you know, top pajamas, but uh, cats pajamas, whatever. But yeah, now apparently they've, they've moved everything around to, I guess, you know, not kid themselves. I mean, nook wasn't, they're not what they used to be. And it's just, that's, a, that's just a fact. They're not what they used to be. Uh, yeah. But I mean, um, Still excited. The, the company has been in a state of turmoil for like five or six years. Um, right. You know, five CEOs in like seven years. <laughs> uh, but, you know, the saving grace was when they were sold uh, in late 2019, like November of like last year. Um, they were bought by a company called Elliott. They're like a hedge fund. But what you have to know is that they also owned Waterstones, which if you live in the United Kingdom, it's basically the largest book selling chain in in the UK. So, you know, it's basically Waterstones in the UK, Barnes and Noble in the US, Chapters Indigo in Canada. So, Mm -hmm. you know, and in Germany, it's like Thalia, you know, it's like each, each, you know, each country has its sort of the big book store chain, like they're big sellers. So Uh, Japan has Rakuten. Yeah. So basically the the CEO of Waterstones, James Daunt, is also now the CEO of Barnes & Noble. So he's the first CEO of like two national bookstore chains. So, um, and Barnes & Noble used to be a publicly traded company, but now it's a private company. So they're not like, the one thing about like um, a publicly traded company is that you really have to focus on the quarter by quarter numbers. And if you're not like meeting your financial goals, your stock goes down. And obviously, you know, yeah. you're not, people just aren't investing in your company. And you, when you're a publicly traded company, it's you rely on people buying stocks and holding on to them. So you actually have capital to be able to work with. But yeah. now that they're a private company, they don't have to like worry about placating investors or or the stock market or wall street on a quarter by quarter basis they can have their they have like the long view and you know amazon is a bit of an anomaly like that they're a publicly traded company but they've always had the long view you know all their quarterly results are like we we're focusing on the long term like we're building infrastructure for the long term you know it was like you know amazon basically like started like pretty early on like you know um so it's Barnes Noble's like sort of, you know, okay. So what I'm basically trying to say is that, you know, Barnes and Noble was in a state turmoil, but now it's things have seemed stabilized. Like just in this last 2021, things are stable now. Like they have new people in charge of Nook that, you know, have only been at the company for like a year. Uh, they have like the VP of Nook that's only really kind of been there for about a year and a half at the company, you know, and he's actually in charge of the e-commerce site and Nook. And, you know, there's all these like really cool executives that are, I actually talk to now regularly. Uh, whereas in the past, I couldn't get near any of the executives. Like they just had no interest in talking to the media. You actually had to go through Barnes and Noble PR, which was like, terrible like to deal with like we couldn't even get review units like from them unless we were like the washington post but you know ever since like they got bought out and there's all these new people there it's like i talk to them like weekly you know just hey like you know shooting the breeze on you know the publishing industry the ebook industry audiobook industry you know uh they pick my brain on like you know what's new in the e-reader world you know what should we focus on uh, in our roadmap in the future so it's like you know they're they're actually engaged at least with myself, you know, because like I, I love to introduce myself, you know, and, and, and to make new contacts within sort of these larger companies and stuff like that. Um, So, you know, I've gotten new contacts like with Amazon, but, you know, they don't really disclose Mm -hmm. very much and they're not really too interested in just dialogue, but um, I got a new contact at Amazon. We talked, we talked like on zoom for like an hour and a half, just like about, you know, it started about like, you know, some of my Kindle articles and reviews weren't totally factually correct. Like, you know, I said it had this much RAM, but it in reality had this much RAM, you know, yeah. uh, semantics, you know, it wasn't like glaring omissions. It was just like small editorial changes. So we just like put infrastructure into place where like, 
you know, if I'm not sure about something, they'll generally like respond within a couple hours now. So that's cool. So nice. yeah, to wrap it up, Barnes well, and Noble. We're going to go to some comments because people want to weigh in on exactly this. Spider okay. says, former Barnes and Noble employee here. We always knew Nook was a sunk cost dilemma. That's cool. We're seeing, you know, inside information from uh, these uh, actual employees. Courtney Bowman says, my Barnes and Noble has always had it in the middle of the store at the customer request desk. So yeah, just like you said, Mike, sometimes it's that customer service. Um, Jada says, do you think they'll be able to recover at this point? I wanna support Barnes and Noble, but it seems like they're pushing the last of their devices out before they close up shop. Uh, Jada, as Michael was talking, uh, as your comment landed, Michael was talking, no, things are, things are pretty stable now. So we should, uh, we should be good. Yeah, don't, don't expect Barnes and Noble to exit the industry anytime soon. They no. make a lot of money on eBooks. Um, they don't really make too much on audiobooks. Like, you know, most people wouldn't even know that Barnes and Noble sold audiobooks, but, um, you know, they have an app for Android, you know, I don't even think they have like an app for like iOS. I don't know. You wouldn't, I don't use any Apple products, but, uh, 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 yeah, I mean, they, they have apps, I think for like, uh, Android for sure, because you can buy content like through it. And I, I you yeah. know, I've test I've reviewed it like when they first released it, but yeah, I mean, I've, I've always told them that like, you know, you should include like an audiobook player and, and sell audiobooks on your ink devices because more people probably use Nook hardware, like whether it's a tablet or yeah. an, like an e-reader, then they have a Nook app installed on their smartphone. Yeah. Uh, AJ White says, I used to go by the Nook kiosk and check the devices out, but I can't remember the last time they caught my eye. Uh, that's a good one, AJ. And I'll tell you why. It's because the last two devices from Barnes and Noble, the Glowlight Plus and the Glowlight 3, are just carbon copies of the Simple Touch, which is the same layout, which was made like eight years ago. So yeah, the, their devices, ha they've had a couple times where they deviated into these weird things that look like a child's toy and then a, a bar of soap in a, in a golden bathroom. But yeah, for the most part, they're not very, you don't look at it and you go, whoa. But, you know, to be fair, you don't look at a lot of e-readers, like e-book readers and go, whoa. It wasn't until the... Yeah, you put, you put voyage. literally every single paper white beside each other yes. and you wouldn't know which model is No, which. you're not going to do any guitar riffs on a Kindle, but there were a couple times where you see like a Voyage or an Oasis and you go, okay, e-readers can have some style. And then the Forma came out. So I can understand, you know, you're walking by the booth and you're not thinking anything of it because yeah, it's hard to make an e-reader stylish, you know, it's just, that's what the cases and all the accompanying things are going to be there to help you. Uh, a lot of people also say, um, yeah, uh, I went to Barnes and Noble to check, uh, where is it? I went to Barnes and Noble and asked about the new Nook. The employee there had no idea what they're talking about. There's no more excitement or buzz around their products. Yeah, it's interesting, uh, Jada, they're moving things back, taking a lot of things down for the advertisement of the Nook brand, because honestly, like, it's it's not a it's not by any means like a failed product it's it's that's not the case it's just it wasn't where it, they they were like one of the top two in fact maybe the top one at one point kind of like sega and nintendo kind of thing but they're not what they 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 once were so you can't really expect them to go you know every yeah. day balloons popping out little party poppers every time someone walks in the store looking for a nook because that's not the reality it's that the market, as AJ said here too, the market is saturated and there has been a lot and there's players that were nothing who are now something and players that had, you know, something are now nothing. So a lot has changed. A lot. Has yes. Changed. So early Nookie readers had personality. Yes. yes Remember the, 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 like the, the Nook had a, yeah, had a screen at the bottom. You could play chess and yeah, then so, screen up top. Yeah. The first Nook basically was an e-ink device. And then it had like a, you know, a small LCD thing on the yep. bottom. That was that basically was awesome. your library. Um, you know, the, the original simple touch, uh, the Nook color, the, you know, uh, the Nook HD. So yeah. why did early Nook e-readers have a lot of style and later ones didn't? It's because, um, at one time during the heyday of like Barnes and Noble, like when they first got into the e-reader industry and then they started making their own tablets, they actually had their own research and development 
uh, facility in Santa Clara, California. You know, obviously mm. Silicon Valley, there, there was a lot of excellent designers and stuff that like uh, had, you know, that was there at, at that t- at that time on their tablets. They had the, like the Nook video store, the Nook app store. They had like a lot of products and services. And then, you know, as I said earlier, they had this revolving <laughs> doors of CEOs and some of them had fundamental differences over um, should we get rid of the Nook? Maybe not, but let's yeah. let's just slash everything. Let's fire three quarters of the staff. Let's close the R&D office. Let's close Nook Video. Let's close the Nook App Store. Um, you know, and then the next CEO comes along. Let's cost, cost, cost customers even further. Having someone in charge of, you know, a, a dedicated customer service person that's yeah. trained in a Nook that sits at a Nook booth. Let's just you know, fire, you know, this was a big, this is a big thing. And, you know, we have some Nook, uh, sorry, Barnes Noble employees in the chat. Barnes Noble, uh, I think like three or maybe three and a half years ago, they fired like half, almost like three quarters or half of their long-term staff that was actually like working at the chain for like six, seven years. You know, they, they were making some solid money and then they just like hired like all these entry-level people and only they maxed out like their hours worked so they couldn't actually get seniority at the company it, there was just all these cost cutting measures that they put in place you know it and you know for us being e-readers i'm, I'm more or less talking about the nook and not talking about you know their their staff and right. you know all mm-hmm. you know their, their their bookstores and stuff like that and um how you know in the past when they were were a publicly traded company you know if you were a nook and empl- if you were a barnes and noble employee uh everything was mandated from new york like the books that you could promote mandated from New York, um, you know, major publishers would pay Barnes and Noble millions of dollars to advertise their books at the front of the bookstore, or, you know, how you have bookshelves, like big bookshelves. And then you have like the, the, the corner of the bookshelf, which was like front facing the customer. Um, the, those books that actually were there, you can think of them as like sponsored posts, like sponsored content. Publishers would pay money to have stuff stocked there. Um, but, you know, now that Barnes & Nobles is like a private company, uh, they have a totally different philosophy. They're, they're now letting the booksellers determine what books that they advertise, you know, to cater to the local market. You know, there's still like signage and books that are like sponsored, you know, more or less from the major publishers, but it's not as bad as it used to be. Like stores now have a lot of flexibility and freedom on how they want to showcase stuff. So like, you know, one of the users said, there's still a Nook display stand. This is something that the stores themselves could establish. It doesn't have to be at the customer service station. That was like mandated under like a previous like ceo but now stores have freedom they could create a nook like display unit if they want to um they have the freedom to do that and what's actually interesting is during the pandemic barnes and nobles plans to remodel the existing stores close down like underperforming stores which most you know most of the time we're just in malls and, you know, as you know, malls are freaking dead now, um, you know, in, in every, every country, you know, in the eighties, the malls were like the place to be like, let's go to the mall, yo, you know, and like get free samples and just like, you know, hang out with your friends for like a couple hours. That, that doesn't happen anymore. And a lot of, at that time, a lot of the Barnes Noble bookstores were in malls. And so, you know, they're, they're basically closing all the old ones that were in malls and opening up more boutique style stores, less square footage uh, in urban centers, centrally located instead of out in the suburbs where like people just like aren't going, you know, people are, if you live in, you know, like for me, for Vancouver, you know, all the big store, you know, all the big Indigo stores are downtown and a lot of the newer ones are smaller and more boutique because, you know, the rent is lower, but you're selling more books because you're just like on you know, the crossroads of two major streets. And so that's sort of what Barnes and Noble is doing. They're remodeling existing stores, closing down stores and opening up like brand new stores. And so this is a thing that they're really kind of focused on being, focusing on as in terms of being a bookseller as just like smaller, like mo- more boutique, more modern and like gone are the days of like the, you know, the 30,000 square foot, like Barnes and Noble book superstores, mm-hmm. you know, they're, they're, they, they want to get out of that sort of direction and stuff. Yeah. 
so Spider dude just said uh the closing of the brick and mortar stores doesn't really help in the greater los angeles area there are only four stores in a 25 to 50 mile radius that's insane and this is uh spider dude here has um is a former uh barnes and noble employee as as to his uh when he identified himself here uh that's gigantic and i remember when they started closing down um uh, after Barnes and Noble was no longer top dog, uh, they started closing down a lot of locations in Las Vegas and then the Seattle area. And I guess as per his uh, um, instruction here that there was a lot of uh, even Los Angeles is a, um, one of the most famous areas in, uh, in the world, Los Angeles, greater Los Angeles area, it, you know, Santa Monica Pier and all that kind of stuff is that's a huge area of civilization and for them to only have like a handful of stores there now granted you know barnes and noble only has the usa as a market now although they did try to branch out a couple years back but never took off to the point of all these major manufacturers like amazon and kobo and for to a lesser extent pocketbook who's in every country so uh yeah we we've talked about um uh barnes and noble for about 30 minutes here so there, there was a lot that happened this month though mike outside of barnes and noble and we did touch on amazon last week uh last month so we don't really have to go into that unless you wanted to touch on anything interesting that amazon is up to um no i mean you know um what surprised me is that for black friday amazon discounted the the eight gigabyte uh really paper quick. white yeah, so uh, they discounted it by like 30 bucks, like both in the US and Canada. Uh, they and that's didn't... a lot, seeing that the device is only 140 when it came out, right? Yeah, I think like 139, I think. Yeah, so uh, dang. Yeah, so I, I don't know the exact price because like yeah. I live in Canada and it's like, I think it's like regularly like 149 here. I think in the States, it's like 129 or 139 the price is semantics like the, the actual interesting thing is as a canadian if i go to the amazon.com website i can actually view prices for the kindle because i live in canada and they only ship if you go to amazon.com and it's a you know it's sort of established that you you're visiting that site because you live in the u.s uh, yeah. but because i live in canada it actually doesn't show me prices for any of the kindle e-readers it does for like oh. other e-readers like you know kobos and, and nooks and, yeah, yeah, and yeah. all the other e-readers that are sold on amazon but for yeah. kindles it actually doesn't show me prices so that's why i like i'm not sure about all the u.s prices just oh. because as a canadian i can't actually see the prices i gotta like find out the prices from amazon or uh from like other u.s like news channels so it's, it's a little yeah, bit challenging yeah it's it's one of those things that are challenging of being like an e-reader guy that like lives in canada because interesting you're right yeah look at that i'm, I'm checking from it Japan usually right just now. says like sold out or yeah, not available have, you're right it doesn't have any of the prices on anything if you're outside of the states i just bit my lip oh wow interesting. yeah so i believe that I those, that. those huh. kindle discounts are going to be into play until at least monday so if you're looking for like to pull the you know if you've been on the yeah. fence when, whether you wanted to pull the trigger we're waiting for black friday in order to see like you know um yeah are there is there gonna be any savings yes there is on the low end of the kindle paperweight but not the signature edition so yeah, we don't I, know if it, I, it's gonna happen yeah it's but, it, it's yeah. discounted in like the uk canada yeah. the us like in all the major markets that amazon mm -hmm. is in is discounted that model mm -hmm. as well as their resellers so in the states uh they match the kindle discount at best buy and target as well so you could actually oh, yeah. visit a best buy or target location or or you can buy it like online so yeah. uh kobo also for black friday cyber monday is also running discounts but on you know on their lower end so like the get the clara hd the nia and i think like the forma is on sale maybe in just one country uh out of all the, co the kobo things it's just because like they tend not to kobo is like sort of like the anti of amazon for their new devices, they like literally never discount them unless it's been like a couple years since they've been like released. So I remember when the for Forma didn't get a discount, uh, e even a full year after it was released, the Forma didn't get a discount. I think, I think maybe like it, it might, I, I think I'm seeing like a $20 discount 
on like indigo canada a yeah it's like it's like maybe once Barely. once a year yeah, like one one like you know kobo for their higher end like for so so for the sage and even like the format don't expect discounts like at least for like the next couple of years or if they do it it's like a one day flash sale or something like that yeah, um, they do these weird things uh kobo has these weird flash sales sometimes they bring devices back from the grave they did that a couple of times uh, with an older model and the Kobo Mini, that's out of nowhere without any um, uh, warning. They bring back a unit, and the, and it's like just dirt cheap sale price, and it would either have a sale or it'd be like clearance, and then it would just go away, and the SKUs would go away, and the listing would go away, and there was never any record of it being there. And you're just like, well, what just happened? And I remember because when we were um, back in 2004. 14 or something the Kobo mini came back and one of the guys that are in our company said yo mike and pete like look at this and we're like oh my god like buy them all we bought like nine of them or something but yeah and then like the next couple days it was it was gone and there was like i swear it was here guys you gotta believe me like i saw it and you know it's that kind of thing because it's just it's really weird the way they they structure their sales yeah i mean i think what happens is that they they have distribution centers and they have like you know warehouses that they either operate themselves or share and they probably like uh one of the amazon fulfillment centers had like you know 60 to like 100 that that were there that you know they closed the listing years ago and probably amazon just probably sent them an automated email like yo mm-hmm. your your stuff's going to be destroyed unless you want us to send it back to you you know but generally i think that's that's what happened at least with like the mini but yeah i mean sometimes older kindles like uh the manga model may make a brief return because they found like a bunch of like extras it, it did. Yeah, yeah that's a good point it was released in 2015 and it made a resurgence in 2007 17 the that was before every every kindle iteration had a a 32 gig variant but before amazon releasing a manga model at uh 2015 with 32 gigs was like that was monumental at the time because and it was cheap was, too 32 gigs yeah and it wasn't like 400 dollars like the oasis 3 lte no ads was so yeah it was it was pretty interesting at the time and yeah you're right it did come back a couple years later because people wanted it and um and and that that manga model was like both very successful and like a proof of concept type thing from amazon as well because then they're like okay people want more storage so like every variant after that had an eight gig or four gig and then like a larger variant and they also grabbed that fast nav manga scanner that you can like, depending on how far you move your finger in the middle of the screen, the manga would like whip through the whole thing. So they borrowed that engine from it. So thus rendering the manga model, you know, useless. It's like adding H2O to something that wasn't H2O and no longer having to call it H2O. It's like the Kobo, you know, they made the Libra H2O and then they made the Libra 2. We're not going to call it the Libra H2O because everything in the industry is waterproof now for the most part. So it's kind of like that. But uh, yeah, it's funny how these big companies like they, they might have found uh, old stock or something in, sub, in, in a substantial enough amount that they can warrant resurfacing it, mass selling it. They did that with the DX. Remember that, Mike? They brought back the DX at one point. Yeah, like, like a, literally like a year ago. That's right. Yeah, they brought it back after discontinuing it maybe even twice. And um, they were selling it as like, a here's the DX. Here it is. Buy it. And then it was gone again. So, And then that's when reports came out that like, oh, would, would I really trust a 10-year-old device's battery? Because the battery wasn't smart. No. But that's neither here nor there. It's just, it's interesting how these companies do that. They bring back these old devices from the grave. Okay, so uh, there is a, this growing trend on the in, in the e-reader industry to be more transparent over uh, the lifetime support of a device. Um, oh, it's yeah. it mainly stems from uh, Amazon, sage? like Amazon devices, um, not getting firmware updates anymore. So if you have like a Voyage, if you have like a Kindle Paperwhite three, uh, what is that like ninth generation? Uh, uh, Paperwhite four is tenth. Yeah, you're right. So if you have like a ninth generation Kindle, if you have you know the Oasis one, the Oasis two, um, even sometimes the Oasis three, the Voyage, um, you're not getting firmware updates as regularly anymore. Uh, you're not getting any type of like you know things like that on a regular basis. So I think what's happening is um, Amazon is getting more transparent about 
lifetime support. So they're saying from when a device is first available, you'll get four years of support, which means they that give you give you a number. They give you yeah. a, uh, your, your, what do you call like uh, the day, <laughs> the day you're going to die kind of thing. That's yeah. insane. Wow. So okay. that's what they told me. Um, they said that they're going to be updating all of their posts and stuff to like actually disclose how many years of support you have left on a specific device because they are still selling uh, last generations as well as the generations before that on Amazon. So they're officially right. selling older devices on Amazon. So it, they're, they're selling devices huh. that are outside of the actual four year warranty period oh, so did pop up recently i've been seeing a bunch of those listings now that you see yeah. that every time i search for kindle yep there's they're officially you know it's getting rid of old stock but buyer beware you're right. because you're yeah. not actually getting the four-year warranty on that anymore well, uh, no, it's year. not a warranty but it's a four-year support uh, pro projected support range yeah the warranty yeah. is still i think a year yeah so it's getting firmware updates which we've actually chronicalized some of like the hacking things that have happened to kindle some of like the the security holes that like appeared uh that you know hackers have found they haven't used it maliciously but amazon pays like big bucks for bounties so you know they 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 find these things they reach out to amazon they get paid and then once it's been patched they could write about like what they did and their experience finding these holes so they ex these holes still exist on older amazon devices because yeah. they, they don't simply don't get firmware updates anymore yeah but yeah, yeah. and you know in e-readers are the type of thing that you're not going to upgrade every generation you know if you have a some paper people white, do i know some people do yeah. like but the e-reader community is pretty fringe on its own when it comes to like reading i mean like books book sales are like 10 to one, you know, 10 yeah. to 10 books, real books are being sold for every one ebook. And, you know, that, that one, you know, that one is how many people are actually reading those on their phones versus yeah. on a dedicated e-reader. So uh, this is like very niche sort of what we're talking about here, but you know, a buyer beware that a lot of things rely on firmware updates in terms of new new menus new functionality uh redesigns of of, mm. of certain elements like if you've been installing these regular firmware updates of like the kindle in the past like six months you know the nav bar has changed the home Everything screen has changed, changed. Yeah. yeah they're slowly changing the entire yeah, kindle experience point. so if you have an older device you're not getting any of that um, Although Bitter Almonds just commented and says, I have a Kindle 4 from 2011 and it still works tip top. So yeah. that, that's interesting that you have a 10 year old device and it works really well. And then all of, I've been hearing, at least in my branch of Goody Reader here, is the Kobo Sage's battery is the worst battery ever. Someone needs to address this. Like I have been hearing at least without exaggerating one complaint per day on one of our mediums, so either YouTube or customer service or email that the Kobo Sage's battery is terrible. Yeah. So they're, they're, they're using a 1000 milliamp battery. Oh, uh, I think oh, it might be a little higher than that, but yeah, it's, it's, a no, it's, milliamp. it's literally like 1000 milliamp and the, the Kobo, Kobo the Kobo Libra is running like a, a 1200 or 1400. So the lower end is actually running a better battery than the higher end. I'm going to confirm that because 1000 is way too small. If you're right, I'm going to, I'll send you a, a, a gift basket. <laughs> There's no way they're running a 1000 milliamp. Just 1, like, don't milliamp. send me, don't, just don't send me like the expired stuff in your fridge. Oh, I was going to, dang it. <laughs> uh, yeah, 1000 sound. Okay, 1200. You're really close, but dang, that's terrible. Yeah. 1200 milliamp, guys smartphones and like 5,000 milliamp nowadays yeah, is, is I mean, barely on, enough to run the things we use in on e-readers e the common one is like about 2,400 to yeah. about like 4,000 milliamps yeah. so, well, I, I think uh, Onyx is using like 4,300 milliamp for the granted their tablets but still you know what I mean C common companies in our industry in our scope yeah. are using things four times bigger and uh sage is using an octa core process a quad core processor now yeah 
Uh, what do you no, think is running that? It's it's running the Sage is a dual core processor. The Tolino is a quad core processor. Oh. So the the Sage is not running an all winner processor as many people think. It's not. Um, but the Tolino is running an all winner oh, okay. processor because it's like. They wanted it to be faster. Uh, but so. they're using less storage, everybody. That was a big thing. People are like, wait, I thought it was the, the same as the other one. Why is it only using 16 gigs instead of 32? And it's like, well, you know, they're, they're trying to push their cloud services to, you know, right? They got it's make not it it, no, it's not that it's because of the, you know, the, the component shortage, like the, the global component shortage, like out of China, they couldn't right, actually, the, they couldn't the use STs. No. As the internal memory. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. They, they, and they, they, yeah. But they couldn't like find enough components. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, so no. like they couldn't emulate this the Libra 2 into the vision pound because pound, that yeah, yeah. they those those the processors that they were using simply weren't available. They had to buy yeah. new processors. So Kobo told me when they were like buying components for the Sage and the Libra, they actually used to just deal with Nectronics to that's manufacture right. and then right. get all the subcomponents from everyone like yeah. the you know kingston sd card uh yeah. you know this specific model for like the the, Den- the battery battery yeah exactly yeah, yeah, so exactly. they actually had to find all new suppliers because of the component shortage and so they said never seen a, a circuit board finding all new suppliers as mike says it's not like oh yeah i'll find all new suppliers no, man, there's like 110 individual sectors of things that you need to now go and find mass amounts from while everyone else in the world is doing the same thing because of the shortage. So it's not business as usual in the current climate. Yeah. So, you know, car, not enough cars are being made because there isn't just like the electrical components to make them. So like yeah. BMW is actually releasing a series of cars without even any monitors like inside them because yeah. there's no there's no components for like the monitors and in the cars holding up the entire car it's like man we can't get the navi in we can't get the navi it's like release it without the navi at least you can push the cars out and maybe sell them on like something aftermarket later so it's not just affecting uh e-readers it's affecting tablets and smartphones and uh wash video cards air conditioners refrigerators it's it's it, video cards video cards cars new and used and uh consumer electronics like you know handheld screen enabled devices have been the biggest ones we've seen yeah um, if you want to buy like the like this year the new nvidia 3000 series came out and they just didn't make enough cards to meet demand yeah. and when they had like a shipment of car like cards it would be hijacked or they would be stolen <laughs> and it's it was such a real thing it's so silly and what yeah. happened is a lot of the cards were being diverted to china for uh, crypto mining currency, but because crypt- those crypto miners were drawing so much power from like the grid that uh, China couldn't, de- you know, develop, you know, they couldn't uh, accommodate all that extra power anymore. So they basically like blacklisted crypto mining, and now suddenly they're having like a power like shortage, like for like the last yeah. like couple months. So and that's uh, the- why everything in our scope in our world is on hold. And that's why companies like Supernote doesn't have anything. Boy, you doesn't have anything. This guy, you know, discontinued this. Fujitsu had to like, you know, they were completely yeah. sold out of the quadratos. They couldn't that's even right. like, they couldn't even send units to the, the authorized distributors like in no. Japan and like the that's big right. box retailers. So they had to manufacture more and it's like, component shortage, EP, yeah. like electronic paper display shortages. And now e-ink is like basically charging like not double, but pretty close for each e-paper panel that people That's like want right. to buy. So uh, smaller companies like Boyu, like Supernote, uh, like Remarkable, uh, they can't afford to pay like double the price of an e-paper sh- like screen because, um, you know, so a funny story about Remarkable is that because they couldn't sell as many units because of the EPD, like the electronic paper display shortage that's been uh, basically happening since about summer. Um, And it's still ongoing now. That's why they 
unveiled that subscription service because it was um, a way for them to be able to make more money per user because they're not selling enough hardware now because of the EPD shortage and they have no idea when it's going to end. Neither do I. Like e constantly like pushes back the date. Like in the summer, they were like, yeah, in about October, it should be done. And then October came, they're like, yeah, it should be done like late November, early December. Now, like it's pushed back like even further. And it's basically... All of e-ink's panels are pretty well mass manufactured at one specific manufacturing right. plant in China. And what has happened is that um, because of COVID, there's not enough people working there. And now that they have people working there, they actually have to that they actually have to sterilize each individual one. But there's not enough employees there to do that, like in quantity. Yeah. And now with the um, the power like problems and stuff yeah. uh the factories can only be open like two two days like a week instead of open like every day <laughs> so it, it's just like uh, these compounding problems yeah. that are affecting um it's affecting the e-reader industry there just it's simply isn't yeah. yeah there's not enough True. components to go around there's not enough screens to go around so at the critical juncture of of uh, the holiday season when people are buying things and you know buying e-readers in record numbers um good luck finding a kobo power case uh they, oh yeah that, they, uh, they, i'll they, touch on that for 20 seconds yeah the kobo power case what they did is they added the skew for it uh skew means like the item it's, it's just a way of saying the item they added the item for it online it was never available they never had it it wasn't even released but they were selling them to all these people and getting orders and everything it wasn't even planned for 2021 no one has it kobo themselves didn't have it uh michael gave my uh logistics team a little bit of um contact some contacts and we talked to them and we said hey kobo we'd like to get our hands on some power cases for everybody and they're like oh no there's just not there's no power cases and we're like what do you mean they're like oh yeah not till the new year is there going to be anything about power cases and then we said it, it's being sold everywhere and then they looked into it and they're like oh yeah it is so so they no, switched power, everything to pre-orders yep and power cases are if you guys have ordered a power case from kobo uh, rakuten or even us um you know uh, it wasn't a ploy by anybody it's just that there was a lot of miscommunication by whoever put the listings up on kobo initially and they they're not released because the power case has the components in it. it's not just some rubber it actually has it. an internal battery on on a thing so think of yeah. it as this power case of is having is doubling the battery life of your of your Kobo Sage. You mean doubling so, the twelve hundred milliamp? Yeah, yeah, so oh, it's right. sort of like the first generation Kindle Oasis. Oasis, it, yeah. It, it drew power from the case, so almost Co- exclusively. Yeah, so Kobo sort of did something extra where, like, if you attach this power case, it basically the power the power the battery on the case would recharge your Kobo. So you right. effectively got double the battery life, but because there's a battery on that and there's a, there's like a component shortage, there's not enough batteries available to actually make these like in quantity. So yeah, I mean, when you hear about all these things coming out of China, you might be like, who does this really affect? Well, in the e-reader industry, it's affecting everybody. everybody. Uh, you know, so Amazon, Kobo, Barnes and Noble, they have deep enough pockets that they could afford whatever price e-ink is, the added surcharge that e-ink is charging per per panel. And they they find it's an easier time because like uh, Amazon deals with Foxconn and uh, Kobo and Barnes and Noble deal with Nectronix. So -hmm. Nectronix is pretty well like one of the top e-reader assembly manufacturer uh, in Taiwan and they have the ability to be able to find the components easily but it costs more so this is why like there's no shortage of Kobo Sages or Libras or Kindles they, they've never not been sold you know they've never been sold out if anything what maybe I, on one day they're like yeah this ships in two or three weeks from now because that's when the new manufacturer's mm-hmm. run is going to happen that amazon receives the shipment so as sometimes they've had like later shipping dates but that only happens like in a few days then yeah. it resolves itself so yeah uh when nook comes out you know they're gonna have more than enough units for all the christmas season same with the tolino vision 5 yeah. they have you know they're not 
because their hardware is fundamentally supplied by Kobo, um, but there's just a few components that they had to source themselves. There's no shortage of Vision 5s. They're, like, they're being sold in like 500 bookstores in Germany, then in the Netherlands, Austria, and, and you know, all that sort of German speaking uh, across Switzerland, um, all that sort of German speaking area. So there's no shortage of those devices. And so yeah. that's that's the thing with like, you know, having deep pockets is that, you'll never, you're sort of immune to this. It's only the smaller players, like in, in, in the e yeah. industry. And you know who's a little bit of an odd man out that I guess we thought we, we didn't give him enough credit, uh, who is seemingly absolutely unaffected by this in any way, Onyx is scary. They released, I think, close to eight or nine units this year alone during seemingly the largest compounded problematic delays of our consumer electronics generation they've released really? monitors that seems a lot. like okay no, so were, let, let's let, let's 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 do a, let's do a screen share and like actually look at them yeah they've released nine units if you count the one if you count the note x uh and um in china and the one russian model the lumo something they released about nine units yeah uh, so it's, it's silly. I'm, I'm thinking just from Onyx, the Nova three color that came out this year. Yeah. Uh, the Mira, the Mira pro. Yeah. Three. Uh, the leaf, the leaf. Yeah. Four. Uh, note five, note five, five air, air two, air two, uh, Lumi two, Lumi two. Yeah. That's seven. The, the Nova air. Oh yeah, that's eight. Yeah. And the the Russian model they released specifically for the Russian market. Nine units with only a small hindrance on the Note Five because the Air and the Air Two are the same body. The Max and the Max Two are the same body. The Note Three and Note Five are not the same body. So that's where the hindrance lies is that they didn't share the platform and just beef up the internals. They made a new device. The Note Five is made out of the similar kind of construction is the air too. It has an aluminum body. So that lie, that's where the hindrance lied, but it's just amazing how like, you know, everyone's like, okay, uh, uh, oh yeah, we'll, we'll do our best. Fujitsu, 86 year track record is like, oh, uh, we'll try to get the panels. And Onyx is like, oh yeah, okay. Yeah, let's release something else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh yeah, put note five. Yeah, that's great. Skip the four. And it's like, it's unbelievable that it just seems like, you know, they're, unaffected by all this and another interesting play we'll get this into this on another live big me didn't want to compete with all that 10.3 inch uh epd shortage so they were like well why don't we go to linfany who already made the panel that sony was gonna buy that no one else is doing because they're right there let me buy all the panels you've made because no one else has their hands on it and put them on my unit and they released a brand new unit during the largest delay in recent times because you know wh when mike says component shortages and stuff we as consumers look at a packaged unit and goes oh here it is in my hands it is staggering how much work goes into making that from the little tiny wires and the pcb and the cables and the batteries and the magnesium and the lithium it's a lot of work so there's companies that are doing things smart like big me went the other way and they're like i'm not going to compete with all you guys everyone's eating up the 10.3s i'll buy this one that all these guys saw at a trade show. I'm going to grab these. So you can get around it in certain ways, but um, it's just interesting how like a, some of the smaller players are, you know, now pumping up their office chairs and they're sitting high. So it's just, it's interesting what's happening right now. Okay. So uh, the last segment that I wanted to talk about is sort of our individual picks of uh, oh. the best, the best, the best devices that you no. should. Oh, <laughs> we don't have to. I'm, I'm joking it's no oh. because yeah oh okay right. um i just wasn't sure so yeah i mean um so there there's there's each of us has their own sort of favorite devices that came out but one of the most important things to consider is support um you know, Amazon four year support Onyx actually has just announced that each one of their products has a four year guaranteed cycle of updates, which include higher versions of Android, new features and stuff like that. Uh, older devices will get 
So, um, you know, the Note 5, Air 2, um, Lumi 2, they've all had like a lot of software enhancements, both to the e-reading app, to the software, but also uh, fundamental support for Evernote, uh, OneNote, WPS Office, and, and Kindle um, for them to be optimized for their device. So they basically made reduced the latency. So if you actually use OneNote on any of the new Onyx products and then use it on another like thing like the Big Me or something else, uh, the latency will be night and day. You know, you'll draw something and then like one second later it'll appear. But with Onyx, it's like, you know, fluid and seamless. So one of the things you have to consider is the lifetime support. So say for Kobo products, they pretty well update their newest devices all the way to like their first gen devices anytime they release a firmware update because they're all using Linux and they're using the same version of Linux. So they do a firmware update. You know, sometimes they'll do them individually. So um, they'll release an update just for the Ellipsa um, when they wanted to include uh, Bluetooth audio and selling Kobo audio books on the Ellipsa. So they had to release an update just for that. But generally Kobo has been all, always super awesome about supporting their latest devices all the way to like their first device. But they've, because the they don't they, they never update the mini because the mini was using something else for like its OS. So they never update the mini, but that's been discontinued for like, what was like 10 years. So whatever. Um, but yeah, so support is a big thing. Like boy, you, for example, they make some pretty nice hardware, but if you want to support it, they don't really support their previous generation products. And if they do, you have to like download a file from mega you have to da download specific software. Uh, you have to like follow literally a 20 page user guide on how to like upgrade your firmware. It's not just going to the device, clicking for an update, installing it, it reboots and you're good to go. Not with Boyu products. It's like jumping literally through rings and rings of fire over pits of alligators and like anacondas and like recluse brown, brown spiders like and stuff. Yeah, it's a nightmare. So when we sort of will recommend products, it'll be recommended on not only is the device compelling, the you know, is, is the brand recognizable and, and trustworthy? And will they support this over a long time frame? Because, you know, some devices look really awesome and they function and everything's really great. And it's like, wow, this is everything I've always wanted to look for in an e-reader. But it's good luck if they ever do a firmware update. So, mm -hmm. so Peter, let's you wrap. Uh, I got to get another coffee. So tell the folks what you recommend. Oh, big me B1 pro plus. No, I'm kidding. Don't buy that one. No, you can, but it's really expensive. It's $1,200. And, um, that's just what it costs. <laughs> that's not, that's not an upsell by us. That's their MSRP. Um, it's, it's a, it's a tough thing to say what we would recommend based on one unit, because we've seen this massive divide between tablets with e-ink screens and e-readers. So in terms of an e-reader, I mean, the, the Sage is having a little bit of trouble with, you know, power. The Kindle Signature Edition has like a gimmicky wireless charging chi pad built in. So like, you need that? You don't really need that. Do you need note taking on your Sage and, you know, having to spend all the money on it to have a low battery count and then have a, you know, have to buy a secondary pen just to use it? not to say it's not good on paper it's fantastic but like real world usable you'd, you'd be good with like e-readers you'd be good with the libra 2 libra 2 is a solid e-reader a tried and tested line of kobo devices kobo's never had many hiccups with nearly anything outside of the kobo vox the kobo vox was a disaster i'm sorry it was just it was terrible it was it was made cheaply and it, and it performed cheaply, but anything outside of that. And you know what? Every one of the big three, Amazon had the Fire and Kobo had the Vox and then um, Barnes & Noble had the Nook HD. So everyone tried tablets. So um, yeah, I would say the Kobo Libra 2 is, a, is, is what we've seen in our testing. Probably just probably like one of the most stable. I, I would go with that one. In terms of these new line of note-taking giants, 
Uh, yeah, as Mike said, you know, boy use out of nearly everything. Um, I, I, I at one point would have recommended the P78, but then, you know, it doesn't have note taking and the, they're, they're, they're out of stock of everything. Although in terms of note taking, I, I, I got to give it to, you know, I was going to say boy, you P 10 W because you now have a unit that is available it's from boy you boy is top two when it comes to note taking but then it's a it's a question of support as well because you know it's hard to get support from boy even if we relay for you guys that's just like you were hand holding you know it's hard to support boy you in that regard because it's hard to get support from boy you i would honestly just have to give it to onyx when it comes to stability everyone in the chat here is too it's like oh i have my air too uh kevin kevin bossy's here one of our mods on um on uh, on youtube he's he, he's this guy is he knows what he's talking about probably more than i do kevin he's the one who like deconstructs kobos and stuff he's like the air two is fantastic and uh we had uh who else said they got an air two here uh krishna krishna's like oh no not krishna someone did uh someone's like yeah i have i have um an air two and it's fantastic it's getting me through college and stuff like that so oh there it is courtney bowman i'd have to give it to you don't need the air too. I'm going to be completely honest. It's not going to be leaps and bounds above the air, uh, except for the Android version. And like, if you're watching movies and then internal some, storage too. Yeah. And then some storage, but like, honestly, you're not going like, Oh, the air one's garbage. No, dude, they're, they're, they're almost the same. And they're the same body. If you want some stronger magnets, sure. I would say, if you could find yourself a uh, a new used Air One, or even get an Air on sale, that would be my pick for note taking. And while you were getting your coffee, Mike, I'd I said the Libra Two is probably what I would choose for an e reader because of this strong divide we have now between note taking slates and e book readers. So I'd have to give it to the um, uh, the Libra Two. It's just it's so perfect package like between price and performance and yeah i would have to say those are my picks okay so uh for me i'm going to recommend so like e-readers like so dedicated ebook readers and then e-notes so uh devices that are geared towards like writing you know freehand drawing editing and annotating both pdf files and ebooks and things like that um because there's a large segment of users now that are buying professional level e-notes uh, either for school uh, businesses trying to replace paper with digital um, law firms uh, things like that um, so there's there's you know ed the ed education sector you know uh, one of the things of, of us actually selling these devices is that we actually know some of the target markets so like e-notes are being bought by governments they're being bought by like educational institutions that, you know, they buy a few to test and see if they, they want to have all the faculty buy this, you know, we sold um, a, because of exactly that we sold a box of like 50 DPTs down to some security firm in Texas, uh, yeah. because that's, that's where the DPT started. That's where all these note taking started is you couldn't even buy them unless you bought from like a law firm reseller, a music production studio reseller. So it holds true today that, you know, educational institutions and stuff want these. Okay, so um, I can't hype enough e Kaleido 2. Uh, it's great for not just reading eBooks, but reading any type of color content, browsing the web in full color. So I probably would recommend from the trusted resellers, uh, the Pocketbook ink pad color, which came out like uh, February or March of this year. And the, Onyx, and, the, and the Onyx book Nova 3 color, yeah. um, both, both trusted brands, but the Nova 3 actually doubles as a small e-note. So they're both 7.8 inches, both 300 PPI for black and white content and like 100 plus PPI for color content but i find that Kalido 2 really shines on 7.8 to 6 inch screens or like anywhere in between uh so i i just find that for color accuracy a wider gamut uh, all the things that are blending colors together that aren't getting pixelated i i find that those two devices are 
perfectly fine. Uh, the Onyx book one is like $3.99. Uh, the ink pad color is like $2.99. So, uh, you know, it's like you're not paying an arm and a leg for, for a color device. And from like the mainstream uh, brands, it really depends what country you live in. You know, if you live in Taiwan, you probably will deal with Readmu and their Mu Ink series of e-readers. Oh, yeah, you know, so. they... They have e-notes, they have e-readers, you know, they, they cater to a specific local market. Uh, it's the same with like, you know, if you live in a German speaking thing, Tolino would be your be the best device that you can get because you can deal with ebook subscription services right on the device. You can borrow library books right on the device. So it depends what country you live in, but I'm gonna say the bigger players have a presence in all of the countries. So I'd probably say uh, the Paperwhite Signature Edition uh, for just an e-reader. Uh, it has wide availability. Amazon has the deepest and richest ecosystem. They have programs for <clears throat> unlimited subscription reading. They have uh, like programs for your kids, Kids Plus. They have, you know, if you live in the US, you can borrow books from uh, Overdrive and read them on your Kindle. It's pretty good. Um, also for the Kobo, I'd probably say that the um, as long as, you know, people are getting a little hate on it, but I, I do like the Sage. I find that being the able to take- thing is the battery, man. I think that everyone loves the Sage. Yeah. Once the power yeah. case comes out, the Sage will be really awesome. It can solve a lot of the issues. Yeah. yeah. Although the, the, the case is like a hundred bucks. So- <laughs> It's true. That's true. We think of it like everyone's just going to get one in, in the mail for free. It's not what's going to happen. You guys have to buy it. <laughs> That's right. That's a good point. I never thought of that. I'm like, oh, I'm getting my free power case. Like, no, no, we all have to buy them. That's right. And uh, for e-notes, I'd probably recommend the Fujitsu Quaderno uh, A4 second generation, oh, yeah, the 13.3. The it's yeah, like nice. using a new card screen. It's using 1250, which like reduces latency increases speed across the board it, it's it's a complete and utter pleasure to use it, it's probably yeah. my favorite 13.3 inch like device um it's not overly complicated it's like simplified so you're not gonna have to like read like watch like a two hour youtube tutorial from my deep guide or something like that to really understand how this works it's it's simplified it's like choosing your brush choosing like um you know, you're, you're a racer, you yeah. know, choosing this and that it's, it's, it's easy. And it's like, this is why it's like simplified for like businesses and educational and even like, uh, like general, like people who want to use it for school. It's, it's really the nice. 13.3 out. Like it's the, it's, it's the cheapest 13.3, like in today's money that it has ever been, you know, it, 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 we, we did a video of the top five 13.3s you can buy right now. And it's the cheapest one. It honestly is. So are you going to be able to watch YouTube videos and scroll Instagram and look at stories? No, because it's a, it's a professional note taking unit, but yeah, I'd say that, you know what, that's a good one too. That's a really solid yeah. unit. Yeah. So that that's probably my favorite, like large screen reader. And, yeah. um, you know, for, for, from Onyx, that's the brand that I'd probably recommend for note taking, uh, even over the, the Kobo Ellipsa, which is, is no slouch either for note taking, but I find that the Air 2 uh, yeah. probably just has like the best overall performance to price and ratio. And talking about learning something on the Quaderno, how it's so easy. Dude, the Ellipsa was difficult for us. Yeah. It's so advanced. It's not even funny. The learning curve is massive. Even if you've used these for a decade, you get into this and you're like, uh, this takes some time. It took us a while before we could even get our review because of all these like calculations and cells. And it was tough. It was, a, it was the hardest device I think we've ever used. <laughs> it was so difficult. Yeah. That's uh, funny. So yeah. I, I chose the note uh, to over yeah. the remarkable two over the super note uh, a5x yeah. uh, for that 10.3 inch class um may not because uh you know basically the support is one uh you don't have to buy a subscription like you would mm. the remarkable two uh the the super note a5x has pretty well been sold out since like the summer until now right. so i can't really oh, recommend that true. just based on poor availability true. but in 2021 uh 
you know, the, the Air 2, it doesn't suffer from stock shortages. Um, it's yeah. using like Android 11. It has like, you know, a, a Snapdragon, like a named Qualcomm processor versus like a lot of these other brands that aren't using, they're using cheap stuff. You know, they're not, they're not buying like named brand off the shelf stuff. You know, they're using either free scale NXP, like one gigahertz single core processors, or they're using like garbage. So at least like with the, the Note series, like the, the new generation of Onyx devices, they're all using Qualcomm Snapdragon. I think mm-hmm. it's like mm-hmm. 6, 656. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and the last generation used like 636. So, you know, they, you know, they definitely just commented and said, uh, uh, Michael and Peter, I recently bought a P10 based on your guys's reviews. So that's nice, you know, and I, I'd say, I said the P10 is like a solid unit. It doesn't as Michael uh, is l- l- as he prefaced this segment of our top choices as like who's going to be in good support. There's nothing wrong with the P10 or the P10W. It's fantastic. What we're saying is the support is going to be tough. If you're going to say, hey, boy, you, where's my update? Boy, you, (laughs) where's my update? It's like that. The unit itself is great. It's just how long can you use it is another thing. Yeah. So like the reason why I didn't really mention boy use, because for one, getting in contact with them is hard. Uh, They they don't have a, they don't have a website. Uh, they don't have, <laughs> they, they, they do have a Twitter, uh, That's and they true. do have a Facebook page, but Facebook. most of it's all in Chinese. So, uh, if you want to get in contact, like if you, if you want to get in contact with them and say, Hey, like I've noticed a bug in this like feature, right. I'd like to bring it to your attention. Um, who are you going to reach out to? They, they, they don't have an email Rolodex. They don't even have like sales at boyu.com that you could like reach out to you know the best best bet is to ask us to reach out to them because like we have contacts within the company but i mean that's like why it's hard to recommend them same with supernote they don't really have a customer service they have a website and that's basically it they i think they have like a twitter that they update but you know who are you going to talk to about Mm. bugs and stuff like that yeah so it goes beyond the actual same with like remarkable you know um, oh dude remarkable uh you know, even when we need to talk to Remarkable, as as gaining as many contacts as Mike and the news publication has gained, we mail, we email them, we call them, we message them, and we don't get a response for like nine days. Yeah. And I, I mean, I don't want to toot our own horn, but we are a goody reader. We're the guys that break stories and 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 get things before other people get it. If we can't talk to Remarkable it is very unlikely that the average consumer can say, hey, Remarkable, what's up? I have a problem. It's like we have them in our stack of Rolodex business cards for, you know, Fujitsu and Sony. And it's like, if we can't talk to them, unfortunately, it doesn't look like you guys are going to be able to either. So yeah, you know, support, that's a very, you know, it's good that you, you started this segment that way, Mike, because it's true. You buying a product and getting it in your hands is one thing. That's just one thing. But if something comes up and, it, and if it works for 10 years, as some of you guys have been saying that you, you, you win, you, you, you got lucky. And it's true. In this world of planned obsolescence, if there's an issue, you need someone to talk to. And the reality is that most e-reader manufacturers don't have good support. It's just that's what we've it's seen. It's true. Even it's Onyx, true. like if you want to deal with Onyx on your own, like if you have an RMA issue, how do you do it? They don't have a phone number that you can call yeah. on their well, website. They do, but it's in Shenzhen. And yeah. You have to call China and you don't know what branch am I customer service? Is this PR? Is this who, who, who am I talking to here? Yeah. So, yeah. so dealing with Onyx, like on a customer basis is pretty hard. It's like, mm-hmm. you know, you can place your order and they'll ship it out. But if you have a problem, it's really hard to email them because they don't really publicize a lot of their support yeah. emails. Uh, they don't really publicize their like, you know, if you have a RMA problem, they don't really make it easy for you to be able to do that. So, you know, that's why we're authorized resellers uh, of Onyx. Not that that's why we're recommending them, but, um, you know, you deal with us, you know, when you, when you buy yeah. like any, any of the products that like we recommended, uh, even the ones that we don't recommend, we sell, you know, we sell mm-hmm. everything. Like when it comes to like devices and accessories and styluses and cases and screen protectors and, and even just extended warranties, we sell just because like, we know that 
the one year manufacturing warranty sometimes isn't enough. You, your and that's device why we will... sell the extended warranty. Yeah. Because we were, we're sometimes be year two year. or year three, that's when something will start to go either the battery or maybe the screen will start to detach. Like, you know, the, the glue will like start to fade. So there'll be like, you know, as the screen will be indentated a little bit. And so, you know, you, if you want to do an RMA, it's better to do it with like English speaking people that like, you know, live and breathe e-readers that could right. like, you know, do a warranty to Onyx on your behalf, you know, because it's just way easier for us to do it. And like, we're super accessible. I mean, you know, we're on YouTube, you know, we have a contact form on our website that just goes to like you know, either of us or like our sales department and stuff like that. So, um, you know, just throwing it out there that like, you know, sometimes getting support is really hard to do and it's super challenging especially when it comes to brands that are not from north america or western europe it's you know dealing with kobo super easy deal with amazon oh, it's there's a live chat button you have a problem with any of your orders they'll generally just refund you and tell you to keep it <laughs> you, you know return, or you can return something to amazon and it goes on like a conveyor belt and it's like nin, 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 nin. and there's like a little scanner and when it crosses the barcode, it's like, beep. It's like, oh, we got your item back. Here's your refund on your credit card. Like, that's how automated and easy it is. But yeah, then you get something like Supernote. And no bashing Supernote. They're one of the most beautifully deviced units. But it's like, I got my A5. Like, oh, it's broken. Uh, oh, oh, what do I do? Oh, no. Where do I send it? They operate in five countries. But like, what am I doing? So it's, yeah, it's... It's tough. And, you know, there aren't companies like Sanyo and Panasonic and LG that make e-readers. There just, there isn't outside of what Mike just said, Kobo and Amazon, basically. And, to, and if you're in the States, Barnes & Noble. No one else makes e-readers. I mean, Sony makes e-readers kind of, but they're only alive through us. So even if you do have a problem, you got to send it through us anyway. So yeah, mm -hmm. we, we can help facilitate a lot of the issues surrounding the e-reader world. We can't solve all your problems, but we can certainly help. And that's that's why we do these lives. That's why we have, you know, we're, we're constantly, I think Mike's team just hired a couple more uh, customer service agents as well to during the holiday season to like, you know, boost up assistance for all you guys. Cause that's why we do this to give back. And, you know, it's, it's, it's what we need to do to help the community grow. And we have, see, we, we have Kevin Bossy again here in the chat, just modding the crap out of it. Beautiful work, uh, resident professional, Kevin. And um, everyone coming together and just, you know, supporting each other is, is the way it should be. So, uh, Ali Hussein said, Onyx's support is dreadful. They make you send videos, pics, sworn statements just to initiate a return. See, it's 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 tough. Yeah, it's tough. it is. It, it's challenging. I mean, sworn some, statements, it just hit me. Yeah, I mean, and that's why, like, the, that's why Kobo that's and funny. Amazon are, and Barnes & Noble are the biggest players in the U.S. That's because, yeah. you, you, you know, you will have no shortage of support. You know, if you buy a Nook and it doesn't work or you don't like it, you just go back to the store and they'll give you a refund. I mean, yeah. that's, you know, most other brands don't have stores, you know, they don't have physical retail outlets, even like bigger companies like Pocketbook and Onyx, they don't have, they, you know, they, they're exclusively like online. Yeah. Um, not that Amazon is offline to any substantial degree, but I mean, it's just the they're the stuff, you know, you can buy a Kindle at Best Buy, you can buy a Kindle at target you know you can actually go to those locations play around with it if you have a problem there's like geek squad there's like all the stuff that you can take advantage of so i mean we're spoiled in in canada and the states when it comes to availability and like being able to trust amazon to be around you know you trust kobo to be around you trust barnes and noble somewhat to be around you know 10 years from now um a lot of the other brands like you know uh, the you first hear about them through us, you know, because we review, we've been like reviewing pocketbook e-readers since they started making e-readers. We've I been. I remember when we went down, when we started with pocketbook, they invited us to their little booth they had in Seattle, Washington. There's this little booth inside the mall, kind of like you walk through a mall and there's a sunglasses hut and one of those huts that sells like flowers inside a little gel you know they're petrified roses and stuff they had a little booth just like that and it was their official west coast store and it was just this little green booth and it had pocketbook it was really funny that's gone now but uh yeah that was um that was funny that uh they had all these stores across the country 
across the world pocketbook and yeah like, you know new york and all these weird play lithuania and stuff and then just you know slowly just went away and now they're just online a couple little service centers here and there in poland and and you know moldova and stuff yeah like that. But, so uh, like yeah. you know the reason why i recommended fujitsu is because it's a trusted brand as well yeah. everybody's heard of the company the only unfortunate oh, thing true. is yeah. is that it's only it's sort of a product that's only it's made in japan and it's only really sold in japan luckily peter is in japan so yeah. we have like we can find like eat like you know distributors and we've become one ourselves now over yeah. the period of like trying to be one for like four or five years but now you know we're an authorized distributor of like fujitsu which is like a big accomplishment you know yeah. for, for us as a company but um you know the build quality is really good because everything is like done in japan and so it's yeah. a really solid like looking device but actually getting support super easy for us anyways because like peter's in japan if there's like a problem he has like Fujitsu contacts that we can just like send a device to and just get a new one instantly. So yeah. that's like not a problem. Whereas like, you know, that's the thing when you, when you deal with authorized distributors that actually have brick and mortar stores that it's super easy for us to just go to a store and just like, yo, swap these out. Like on us, here's like the invoice yeah. or blah, blah, blah. Right. That's it. Instantly do it. So Certain countries do this better than others. Like Supernote, not sold in retail stores. Onyx, Voyu, not sold in, in retail stores. So it's really hard to sometimes do business with these companies because they're exclusively like online. And there's inherent challenges to like deal with like online companies when it comes to the e-reader world. So, yeah. you know, some companies like Onyx, you know, they've been around for like 10 plus years. Trustworthy company to do business with always do firmware updates like every couple of months they do support older devices like as well but there's you know challenges like they they don't they don't upload their software as like open source like you know software that people could like disseminate online you know they 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 don't like upload their source code to like github for for people to update older devices like on their own and that's the thing when you're using like you know open android instead of just like regular android you know so yeah that's but you know in effect like any e-reader company that's running android doesn't release their source code you know i think amazon's on the only company that releases their kindle source code to like the public yeah. uh kobo doesn't even really do that and they're running linux um so yeah i mean it's the way of the world. So yeah. we've hopefully that you found this like episode of the Good Reader Live both compelling, educational, and you have learned a thing or two. Uh, uh, we've there's one more comment. Oh, that sorry. I'll actually, it's okay that I'll, I'll I'll use towards this because uh, Spider Mensch did make a good comment, and we'll talk about this next month, Mike, uh, at the wrap up because needs to be said. Uh, Reinkstone and Top Joy, what's the deal? We're not going to talk about it now because it's a it's a whole nother segment, but we'll talk about that next month. Uh that's gonna be that's gonna be a big one. But yeah, um, thank you for the comment there. Uh we can't yeah, I'm actually working big. on I'm working on a story uh about yeah. that, but um we gotta talk about that next many time. people have accused them as being scams and yeah. they've done nothing to alleviate our concerns of them not being scams. Right. Um multiple crowdfunding campaigns in multiple countries simultaneously not sending units out uh people have correlated these companies as being the same company and the same company as whiskey yeah. which also did uh, you know raised five six hundred thousand dollars never shipped anything out you yeah. know it's when yeah, you're we'll, when, when we got a lot of evidence actually we've been uh <laughs> slowly piling up we're not building a case it's just it's no. funny that the evidence is shining through and we'll do some screen shares next month because that'll be like the year-end wrap-up uh, and actually next month when we do our live is going to be the year-end wrap-up with michael and i and that's going to be like that's going to be the big one we'll do a we'll do a really long show for that one and uh, you can stick around you can just you know filter off you don't have to stick around and watch the vod but we'll just be talking about everything that went on throughout the year the trends that have come and gone how 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 color was once like oh my god this changed my life and now it's like year two of color and you know everything's pretty much the same <laughs> so we'll be getting into that uh 
on our next live. And of course, uh, every Thursday until we run out of products, we'll be doing a live showcase. And we're still on the fence of either doing a poll or just showing off the big me because we did the poll last time, gave you guys the choice of what to uh, pick. But every time we do a poll, you guys just pick Onyx stuff. So we're probably gonna just not put Onyx on there this time and just uh, show the big me because a lot of you wanna see Kaleido 2 in its 10.3 inch glory. And the big me is the only one in the entire world that does it. Yeah, we like devices that are just interesting. You know, there's no other 10.3 Kaleido 2 um, English product out there. So, you know, there we, uh, we, wasn't the, the Goyu smart book uh, V2? That's, that's a, it, you're, you're right. But that, and that is Kaleido 2, but it's a 7.8. So actually, oh. the Big Me, not only is it the only English one, it's the only one since 2020 December. It is the only one for the past. 13 months now since development that is using a large screen and it's right here and the one that uh michael found at the linfany booth that me and my team went to th it's right here the panel that we saw that got half a million views on youtube is right here inside this unit big me picked it up sony's still slacking but the story still continues and you guys will see it on the live showcase this thursday and that's going to be really fun uh yeah so our next show uh there is uh we'll try not to conflict with the holiday season for most of the, uh, like, the christmas followers and look the last saturday of the month is christmas day uh we should probably do boxing day but then everyone's out shopping what do you guys think when do you want to see the last uh yeah we can do either the 19th well so probably sundays are better than saturdays uh yeah. so we should probably just start doing this on sundays so we can do either the 19th or the 26th yeah um you know what let's uh Let's open up a poll after this on YouTube community and we'll, we'll see what everyone wants to, wants to hit up. Um, yeah. We'll, 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 we'll acquiesce yeah. to like your guys. Cause like, you know, the 26th is like, is that boxing day or the day after boxing Correct. day? Correct. Yeah. 26 is the bot is boxing day. That would be when everyone's not at home watching. And it's not so much like we need you guys here, but like, that's the point is that everyone can join together in the chat. And, yeah. I think most people will on. probably be like, home for christmas and spending time with their family whereas the 19th i think is probably like enough time before christmas that people yeah, could that still they can they can watch you know they're either home yeah. and not doing christmasy yeah. stuff yet uh because like most christmas parties are going to be on friday or saturday they're yeah, not going to yeah. be on sundays so you can drink some eggnog and rum and like <laughs> yeah okay and chat works, chat with your too, boys because then people have four more business days to do their last minute shopping and maybe based on our suggestions of that day they can do their last minute shopping yeah and i mean um <laughs> you know we we might do like uh peter might do like a live thing once we get the new nook and do like uh, sort of like yeah, a live preview be, honestly like we're gonna be firing off live showcases as long as we have products because there's too much stuff uh, we, we have to show you guys because there's just there's too much stuff. And like Mike said a million times, and, it, and it's true, you can't go to a store if you don't live in a, in a, you know, a country that makes their own e-readers like, you know, Kobo is Canadian. So you buy a Kobo and Indigo. You can't go into a store and say, this is cool. Look at this. Oh, wow. I live in, you know, uh, uh, North Macedonia. I want to see the big meat. It, that is impossible. It's impossible. So we'll do the best we can and show you guys the best we can in an unbridled, completely leaving it open to you guys. If you guys say jump, we'll jump and we'll show you note taking. We'll show you color palettes. We'll show you everything on these units and let you guys, you know, take the reins. So yeah, we'll be doing live showcases on whatever we have. And this week will be the big me and uh, we'll be scheduling that. And then we'll do the uh, eggnog Sunday on uh, December 19th for the year end wrap up. Yeah, I will actually be drinking rum and eggnog live on the stream. <laughs> and like, I, I literally like never drink like alcohol. It's 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 really rare that I okay. actually do. So you'll be able to like watch me like being all out of my gourd. Well, like I'll probably nurse one over the period of like an hour and a half. So yeah, I I'll probably just be like same, course. same old, same old me. Uh, but yeah, so I uh, appreciate everyone from like being around and uh, thanks for hanging out with us and um, listening to us rant and rave about That's e-readers right. and hopefully everything that we've talked about is, is compelling, visually arresting. Um, so yeah, thanks everyone and we'll talk to you later.